Hi, hi, Vereswa. Uh, thank you uh, for com coming to my show. Hi, thank. Thank you for inviting me. So I thought to tell about uh, your work and uh, the experiences of your the work experience of yours to my audience. Okay. So I I work at Amazon Web Web Services AWS. I work as a developer advocate. I'm based in Johannesburg, South Africa, the Saharan Africa AWS developer community. I I do work with people beyond just Africa. So it doesn't mean I want to talk to you if you're not from Africa, but mainly I'm assigned to work with a developer community from Sub-Saharan Africa. So as a developer advocate, my role really is to help you succeed or um, um, have a much better experience as you build on AWS. So how I do that is in different formats. I, I speak at meetups, speak at conferences, I write blogs, Essentially, I create content that actually helps you in learning and building on AWS. So uh, you talk about AWS and AWS startups and uh, AWS community, AWS user groups and AWS community. Yes. So uh, you attend to conferences and uh, you attend to events about A AWS. Yes, yes, yes. So it's all kinds of events about AWS, conferences, meetups. So um, I, I'm sure this exists in other tech communities as well, where you have uh, uh, user groups. Uh, so there are AWS user groups. They're not owned or run by AWS. Uh, it's members of the community who decide to come together and, uh, and talk all things AWS and share knowledge because they are AWS enthusiasts. So those people tend to invite us to come and speak at their meetups. Also, the user groups that are in my area, I will uh, support and mentor them in any way that I can. Uh, so it's speaking at those meetups, it's conferences, it's YouTube videos that we create, like we're creating content, it's blogging where we write articles, it is we on Twitch, we live stream, we are everywhere where you are as a developer and we bring the content and it's always about helping you build better and uh, just succeed and have a much better experience on AWS. So you are into AWS from? So I learned. Uh, you are into AWS uh, from how many years? Oh, okay, she. I've been I've been working with AWS now since 2017. 2017, yeah. So that's about what four or five years going on five years. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Yeah, but it's been since 2017. It started being quite a buzz here in South Africa around that time. I think around 2017, 15, maybe even. And uh, in 2017, I it actually came across it. I was just looking for more things and new things to learn. You know, as people in tech. We're always looking to learn new skills. And I saw that, that cloud was this new buzz and I wanted to learn more about it. And also hearing about how uh, companies are using cloud to digitally transform themselves. I was very curious and interested. I wanted to be a part of that. So that was my introduction to AWS. So, so you started your career as software developer? Yes. Yeah. I long time ago. I went to a mainframe as a as a as a as a software developer. So how how was that uh, after completion of your education? Uh, what made you to come into software development? Well, I was I was studying tech already at the college where I was. I was always curious about tech, and uh, yeah, I was studying tech. And for me, when I finished my studies, it seemed like the natural place to go. Software development. And I, my first role was at, um, at a car manufacturing company. And uh, I worked on, I don't know if your audience is old enough to have come across something that was called Y2K project, the year 2000 project. We were fixing dates to align. It was just before the date switched over to 2000. And there was this fear in the industry that the current systems were not going to cope. So my role and others was to go through the system and change all the date variables to align to the numeric eight that was now the new date, new date format. So yeah, that was my first role. Oh, coming to your present job, uh, 
what is what is what what exactly your role is and what you do so as a as a developer advocate like i just mentioned uh it's about helping the developer community learn aws have a much better experience mm -hmm. than aws be, uh, beyond that also we almost like an and well not almost we are an advocate for you as a developer inside aws um so we take feedback back to the service team so whatever feedback we get from the developers we can take that back to the service team so we advocate for the developer inside aws as well so uh, you worked as software developer for a long time so what you learned what i learned was how technology is forever evolving and how technology remains interesting because it's forever evolving and that you can never stop learning and um i actually think if you are in tech and you're not someone who is into learning you think i think you're in the wrong space there's always such new things to learn and it's exciting also also because the pace of technology moves very fast it's very exciting so how uh, software development is uh, impacting the the world yeah um and it's been actually amazing especially of late because we have so many applications and products that are actually changing people's lives and uh the, yeah, it's software. It's uh, there's code behind them. So the uh, software is moved from just being what enables big companies to actually being something that's life changing for so many as well. You know, there's so many NGOs who who run on software, and uh, so many other organizations that actually help the people out there that um, uh, um, run on software. So impacting the world. So you are into AWS from last uh, to, from 2017. So you your first wo uh, job in AWS is? Uh, I was a cloud engineer. That was my first role after I learned AWS. It took me about two years to actually get the role. Uh, I was a cloud engineer uh, working for a bank, and um, it was great because most companies are at very early stages of migrating their on-premises applications to. AWS and I got to work for a company that was at those early stages and it was great to actually be, be there while they're still planning everything out, drawing out those new architectures and what that's going to look like. So um, I was a cloud engineer. So as a cloud engineer, if a, if a beginners want to come into, uh, you know, the people who are into technology but uh, who wants to move into cloud, uh, is it important for them to know uh, many services in AWS? I wouldn't say so. I would actually, especially when you're starting out, just find, um, what do I call it? Find a vertical that you actually want to specialize in, that you want to go deep in. And because you find that when you're looking for uh, job opportunities, they want to know the level of your knowledge on this one thing. So you have people who specialize and they dive very deep on, say, containers, on serverless applications, on databases, on AI, ML, on IoT, you find people tend to, at some point, go for that specialization. There is so much in the cloud, and if you want to go and learn everything in one go, it actually becomes quite overwhelming. So I would pick a topic that interests me and that I'm very um, attracted to, and I would learn that very well. Of course, you can always move on to the next one, but I would try and go deep in one topic or a couple of topics as a start. Uh, so people who are uh, who are not into technology, who has a non-technical background, can they come into AWS? Yes, they can. Funny enough, I actually just answered a question like that exactly today because I get a lot of people send me DMs and they want to learn AWS. They're hearing about it and they're wondering, can they also Meanwhile, their background is not technical, and yes, you can. And um, what I always share with them is we have on our training site on AWS, we have, uh, you can go into the training, I can share the link with you, and you can actually find out or go and learn or find out how to learn AWS by role, by specialization. And I find that actually helps a lot of people who are starting out because it then helps them 
uh, you know, uh, focus on a, on, a, on a topic that maybe they want to just go into. And also there is a, a certified cloud practitioner certification that we have on AWS. And I always advise this as a, as a place to start, not because you are chasing a certification, because the training that goes with that actually introduces you to the concepts of AWS, the concepts of the cloud. So it's a very great place to start. It's not just about getting the sets, but learning those concepts as well. And then of course, having an AWS account and start building things hands on, doing workshops, doing tutorials, it's a very great way to start. Uh, is it important uh, uh, for a candidate to have a AWS certification in order to get a job? It's, it depends on where you are. I see there are places originally where that's important, and there are regions where it's not. Um, I know here in Africa, it, it, it's very important. So a lot of people actually chase getting those certifications because the employers still take those very seriously. Um, but I've seen yeah. conversations on social media people in, say, Europe and the U.S., where they don't, where in some places, there isn't so much emphasis on getting certified. So I think it depends on where you are. And it depends on what you want as well as the developer. So how many roles are there in AWS? Uh, you mean as an AWS cloud engineer or as a professional, AWS professional? Uh, the complete... Uh... In AWS, uh, in Amazon Web Services, how many jobs are there? How many types of jobs? Oh, there's a lot. I mean, you can be a cloud engineer, you can be a security engineer, you can be a networks engineer, you can be a DevOps, AIML engineer. The list is very long. Again, that link that I told you about, if, a person, if someone goes there, you can actually see the type of roles that you can actually go and do. So how should I know as a beginner, uh, I don't know uh, uh, which role suits for my uh, my thinking or uh, which role, uh, I mean, which subject I know in AWS, how, sh how should I know? Okay, so that'll be one of the guys, but uh, I mean, also uh, um, above just or beyond just what's the AWS website. And this is why it's so important for people to be part of communities. So, because when you join these user communities, when you find AWS communities online, on social media, it's, you, you have, you're going to hear all these conversations that start to shape your thinking or your knowledge of what's actually out there. And then you're going to become curious about a topic. And then you're going to go and research it. And that's how you can actually sometimes start figuring out what you actually want to go into because you're going to hear what people are talking about and you're going to think, okay, that's, that's interesting. You go and look, is it for you? And then you find it is. And then you focus your learning and your studying towards that. So it's a mix of things on how you can actually find out. So people who wants to come into uh, AWS who don't have a technical background, can they understand the terminology? Can they understand the vocabulary? Um, that's again, it goes back to that cloud practitioner. It's so great because it introduces you to this introduction or introductory kind of concept. So it will explain uh, what is AWS to you. It will explain what is EC2. And these are the very concepts that when you are learning AWS, it's good to be introduced to. So how much time it takes for me to understand uh, the fundamentals of AWS? It depends. It depends on how, on your, on your, on how much time you actually are willing to, to, to dedicate to it. It depends on, um, yes, there's a variety of things. We're different as people and we learn at very different paces to each other. So I'd say it depends. So if I, if I get a job as a cloud engineer, what will be the first thing that I'm going to do with the fundamentals that I have? Uh, so when you get a when you get a job, it's gonna be about what can you do, and that's why it's very important that above, beyond just learning for the certification and passing, that you are hands on building things on AWS. Because even when you go for an interview, the question is not gonna be about the concept. They're gonna wanna know what have you built and how did you build it. And uh, so when you get that role, that's what you actually bring to the role. So. Uh... 
uh, you said uh, it it uh, uh, people should have the hands on experience so what kind of projects that uh, they need to do in order to get a job yeah and that's the thing that also people because when you're just sitting by yourself you don't know you don't know where to start uh but on aws we've got workshops i can share that link with you as well we've got workshops that we've actually just tailored out and these are to help people get started on various topics on aws we have tutorials we have blogs that are published to announce new services and usually these blogs will come with a little tutorial on it to show you how to get started with this new service that we are announcing. A combination of those things and um, attending summits, dev days, these are um, uh, events of AWS where we talk about um, uh, uh, solutions on AWS. A combination of those things will actually help you get that heads on experience building on AWS. So where is AWS used in the information technology? Who are using this? Big enterprises are using us. Small to medium businesses are using us. Uh, schools are using us. Universities are using us. You and me, individuals, are using us, are using AWS. So it's a whole host of people who are looking to build solutions in the cloud are using us. Uh, what an engineer do? Cloud engineer. Okay, so it varies depending on the company that you work for. Uh, some will build, so you can be a software engineer on AWS or in the cloud. So this is someone who's already been building, uh, writing uh, applications, but now you are writing them in the cloud. So that's a software engineer, cloud engineer in the cloud. You can be a cloud architect and cloud architects design end to end what a solution would look like in the cloud. You've got networks engineers that would uh, look after the networking side of the cloud. And you would have security engineers, and for them, it's about securing the cloud. It's a long list. You've got DevOps engineers, and for them, it's about those CI CD pipelines. And uh, it's, a, it's a long list of different roles. And, and, and yeah, that's basically what engineers do. So, all engineers uh, need to have coding knowledge? No, I think it depends on the type of engineer. Um, I know with cloud architects, usually, because they're not really writing the, those applications, they normally would not bring uh, coding here. They might know how to write a, a Python script or, or a few things here and there, but their main role is not to write code. Yeah, I hear it. the dogs are barking. So is it okay for you if I ask? Fine. Yeah, so you you started uh, your career as software developer. So how that is helping you in uh, being a good leader today? You are explaining things and you're being the member of the community. You're spreading the knowledge. I think every role I've had is kind of added up to where I am today. Because writing code, I understand what that's like. I was a business analyst. That has helped me with the communication and uh, beyond just communication, knowing what they're uh, being introduced to a problem before there's even an idea of what the solution will look like. And that's what being a business analyst actually helped me. Helped me know how to work through what the customer is presenting as a problem before you even start thinking about a solution or as a solution architect. So I did those designs of those end-to-end -end architectures for applications. So I think each role I've had has actually prepared me. So uh, without experience, without having uh, experience in cloud, can, can, can any person get a job in cloud? So experience, you mean uh, being employed. So, and this is what I always say, because people think, um, questions I tend to get asked is, I can't find a job in cloud. How am I going to say I've got experience? And this is why I always talk about uh, doing your own side projects. So, so it goes back to those workshops I was talking about, those tutorials, your own building of your own um, solutions. So when you go for an interview one day, that's actually what you can use as evidence. Like, look, I've built this, and that's what I've built. Because uh, you've got your solution in GitHub, you've got, you've written a blog about it, 
And that's what you can actually bring and say, that's what you've built. And you can evidence that as your experience. So after doing project, they have to put in GitHub and uh, they have to write in their blogs in order to tell the recruiter that I did this. Yeah, well, it's, it's one of the most public places or any public place because the whole thing these days is about what you do being publicly viewable or publicly accessible. So whatever platform that is public for you, you can use that and that's where you can actually host whatever you're working on. So I have a website uh, which is called Smartshare Tech where I'll write about uh, 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 the, the fundamental uh, uh, fundamental services of AWS. I just started it. So I have theoretical knowledge. I'm just watching the videos on YouTube and just writing it. Uh, by, uh, it is just theory. I don't have hands-on experience. Can I able to get job with a theory without having hands-on? Okay, I think I'll go back to the it depends. Because it's going to depend on what your interview is like. If you can answer the questions at the interview like that, then sure. But if not, then yeah, it's going to depend on where you go for the interview and what they're asking you. So I, 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 saw, I saw different companies are asking different level of uh, experience. So uh, uh, I know people who are applying for uh, all the companies, even... Uh, uh, they don't have experience, but they still believe that uh, they are able to do that. So how this is going to happen? Yeah, I mean, you can always try. I, I think that's fine. I mean, I'll never tell anyone to not apply. Uh, you can always try because you never know where it's going to go. So uh, in your experience, in your present job, what do you observe? What, what, what the new people come to you and what kind of question they ask? It's how do I get started with AWS? How do I learn AWS? It is, and then it's about specific solutions that I will get an, a question about. But it's mainly that it's most of the people who speak to me are looking to get started with AWS. I think also because that's actually who I work with, those who are getting started on AWS. So a lot of the questions I get asked are around how to get started. So you help people online from, you know, who are, uh, who, who wants to ask some questions, you are helping them? Yes. Uh, how how uh, people who are watching this video are listening to you now, how can they uh, connect to you and can learn from you? Okay, so I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn, I, I, I post quite a lot on LinkedIn. I got some YouTube videos from long ago, I'm going to start publishing some videos again this year. I'm gonna do a lot of workshops because like I was saying, workshops are found to be the most hands-on way to actually learn anything. Uh, so yeah, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, YouTube. That's mainly where I am. Is it free? Uh, what to, to get onto LinkedIn? The workshops, or... the, the workshops if people yes. want to. Yes, 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 they are free. So how, uh, you know, people from different uh, parts of the world uh, wants to connect and learn from you. So how the time zones will be different, how they are able to learn from you. I think that's the thing that's so great about uh, 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 content being on a YouTube because you can log on when you have the time, right? And then you can ask questions from then on. And when I wake up, whenever, then I can look at the questions and ask. Uh, I think that's a great thing with things being on social media and uh, being accessible at any time. <laughs> so also, you already have... Not, yeah. I also want to add, I'm not the only developer advocate at AWS. So you can, as a person, as a developer, look for a developer advocate in your area or in your region. There is a developer advocate in India, we've got in, um, in the US, we've got, we've got in Europe, we've got all over the world. So you can find the one that's closest to you. So, uh, so, like you said, uh, there are different uh, uh, services in uh, AWS, compute, storage, database, everything. So, uh, which one is uh, best to learn? It depends. Again, it depends on what interests you. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I mean, you, what people you will hear a lot is, oh, everything AIML, but I don't think everyone is to learn AIML. You go for what interests you. And what I will say is that cloud skills in general are in demand. 
uh, uh, so what you learn in the cloud, that then becomes what is interesting to you and what you see as being in demand where you are as far as jobs are concerned. So coming to your job, uh, you worked as major accounts uh, executive. So how was that? Mm, that is not a role I remember, but <laughs> my, most of my roles have always been quite technical. So if anything that I will remember, it will be my technical roles, the developer, the solution architect roles. So uh, people uh, in different levels will be watching and listening to our conversation uh, who are already in the cloud, who wants to come into the cloud, who are already experts in the cloud. So what do you say? I say there is still so much scope in terms of how the cloud is still going to offer so many solutions. There's so much scope in terms of what companies can actually um, take advantage of in the cloud. And there's so much scope in terms of job opportunities in the cloud. So there's just so many opportunities right now. And I think it's such an exciting time for a person who wants to actually start in the cloud. Because a person listening might think, oh, she started in 2017. So if I start now, I'm too late. You're not late. There's still so much scope to actually get into this. So uh, technology people who are, who are all already in the technology, but who are in different field in technology. So how they are able to connect with uh, AWS and how they are able to uh, do the work in AWS? Uh, so you can go to aws.amazon.com and that's where you're going to learn about all things AWS. That's where we have all the different products and services that we have. That's where we will publish about partners. That's where we publish about events that we host. Um, so aws.amazon.com is a good place to start. So at last, what do you say to the world who is watching and listening to this? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's, 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 an, it's an exciting time if you, not just cloud, technology as, as a whole. And we were talking about this in the beginning, that technology is, is enabling so much. It's bringing so much change and there's so much impact. So it's an exciting time to be part of technology, cloud, of course. Um, I would say, yeah, and if you want to start, even if you're not in tech, this is the time to start. Don't hold back and think you cannot, you can. So at last, uh, as, a, as a developer advocate, so have you seen any videos of mine on YouTube? And what do you say about it? I've seen a few, but I wouldn't be able to say. I've seen a few I, a while back, but I wouldn't even, add, add, yeah, but I've watched a few, I think, yeah. So I actually take interviews of different country people who are into technology, who are already technology experts, uh, who are into cloud, uh, who are into Microsoft, who are into uh, uh, different fields in, in technology so mm. uh, software engineers like also non-technical people like uh, just just trying to put it in my youtube channel interviewing them so so this communicating with different country people who are into technology uh, as a person who did masters in software engineering and uh, bachelors in computer science and engineering how this experience this content creating experience talking with experts like you how this is going to helpful for me in, if I work in cloud or in technology? Um, I think what's great about uh, about about your, your your YouTube then, just based on the on, on the few episodes that I was able to see, is you bringing that information that uh, a person would normally just find just from searching on the internet, and um, just like the topics that we we're discussing today, it's it's we we discussing topics that help a person know where to start and I think that's what's great so it's helpful to the person out there who is still trying to figure out where do I go to search for this and that and you're just bringing them that information and that's what I think is great so uh, if you send me your web links uh, that will help uh, people who wants to come into AWS you know I will put in the description of this video people who find the video on YouTube can see uh, the links and uh, can can learn from you Okay, great. I'll do that. So, so for my podcast, people who are listening to this conversation on co podcast, so can you spell uh, your web links or uh, your uh, presence on internet, uh, you know, so that they can listen and they can search? 
Okay. So I think I think the AWS um, website is going to be the most helpful because a lot of what I talked about today, you can actually find in the different tabs when you go onto AWS. So it's aws.amazon.com. You it's, it's where best place to start because you're going to find information about our products and services. There is a tab for training and certification, which the learning by role and learning by solution that I was talking about earlier, you'll be able to find there. Um, that's where we publish when we have global events. That's where we publish them. You'll be able to see them. And that's where you would go if you wanted to open an AWS account. And um, it's, it's just all things AWS is the best place to start. Um, so a point there for all the other links that I was talking about. And then I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, my my name and surname, uh, I'll spell it out, Velisa Boya, but you're also going to have it right as the title of this video. So that's the name. And I'm the only one on there. And they can just find me on LinkedIn and uh, and then we can we can chat and ask the questions. I'm on Twitter as well, but I don't really share a lot of what's really useful on Twitter. I'm, 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 I share a lot of stuff on LinkedIn. So I, I, I hope uh, you continue doing what you're doing and I hope uh, because of your knowledge a lot can learn and can uh, 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 and you'll be the reason for their growth. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for, uh, for, for inviting me to your show. Thank you for all the questions. And yeah, great. Thank you very much. Can I put this video on uh, video on my YouTube channel with your permission? Yes, yes, I'll, I'll say now we can we can publish. And also, can I put this audio and video clip on my podcast, website, internet, social media, everywhere with your permission? Yes, we can. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's, uh, uh, keep going, keep doing what you love. Okay. Thank you, Sai. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.